Hey everyone, David C. Anderson here coming at you from the Knife Center. We're proud that we can still come to you right now in these trying times. So I'm in right now so we can take a look at some of the new knives that have hit our shelves in the last week. This is actually the first time I'm seeing most of them myself. So let's check them out. So the first one I've got here is a new steel will. This is called the Avior or the Avior. I'm not quite sure how they uh, intend it to be pronounced, but it's a steel will, which means we've got a very affordably priced flipping knife here with some pretty good materials. We've got a D2 blade, about three and three, 3.35 inches is what we've got on the website right now. Nice drop point profile with a flat grind, a little bit of a recurve, and that kind of carries through a little bit, that little curve on the edge carries through to the whole knife. This is, knife is a whole bunch of nice little curves. In fact, I don't think there is a straight line anywhere on this knife, which is pretty cool. Blade has that little hump there near the, near the back that kind of functions as a thumb ramp and then transitions into the sweep of the handle, that handle being G10, red on this particular one. You can also get it with a black G10 handle and that one, can, that one will come with a uh, black stone wash or a satin blade. So if you, want, if you don't like the black stone wash, you can get the black handled version that will have the satin blade for you. Flipping action, very good because we've got ball bearings in the pivot. And all this comes together for just over 55 bucks, 56, uh, 55.99 right now on the website. Pretty good deal. Uh, steel wheels always have been pretty good deals. They've even got a few that aren't quite so big that even come in under the $50 mark. So definitely check some of that stuff out. Liner lock has a matching black finish to the blade and it's inset too. So you don't have the, the, the layer of the liner sticking out. Again, just a nice little premium feeling feature. Really cool, I like it a lot. It's got a bit of a contour to the handle, fills the hand up really well. I like this sweep that they've put here near the pivot at the top end, kind of pinches down a little bit and it lets you kind of get up there and choke up in a pinch grip. And of course you got that choil you can choke up there as well. Pretty cool design, uh, pocket clip. Uh, it's a, not a reversible pocket clip actually. It's a tip up pocket clip but it actually comes with a different clip for the other side. So you can still carry this either side. You just have a, an extra little clip. We see cold steel do that a lot and we see it here too. Really cool design, really affordable and just very capable, I think, very nice. All right, next up we've got the cold steel click and cut. What this is, is it may look like a folder, but this actually isn't. It's not a fixed blade either though. This is actually a replaceable blade utility knife, non-folding but it does use their triad lock locking mechanism. When you push that down, instead of this folding under, you can just kind of pull that blade right out. Pretty interesting take on the subject. Uh, and it comes with a few different blades as well as a sheath and it's priced at uh, just under 25 bucks. The sheath is right here, it's hard plastic. And despite the shape of the, of the sheath, making it look like the knife might go in this way, it does go in uh, this, this way on the, uh, so it's set up for right side carry. We've got a Velcro strap to help keep it in, as well as a nice clip there with a little bit of a J hook at the bottom to keep it from slipping off your belt, but you can still take it on and off pretty easily when you want to. As such, this sheath is not quite ambidextrous. You can't really flip the knife around. You can still carry it on the left side. You're just gonna have to flip the knife around before you stick it in there. But you can see here on the front, we've got some extra blades. We've got a plain edge Warncliffe blade, as well as another Warncliffe blade, only this one with serrations. And it's pretty cool that they include those there. Uh, it comes with all three of those different styles, but if you like one style over the other, you can buy each of these in three packs individually, or that kind of doesn't make sense. You can buy each one of these patterns by themselves, but in a three pack, uh, if you want to stock up on any one uh, given pattern, I think they're like 12 or 13 bucks right now. Uh, but the blade changes are very easy once this gets dull. I think, of course, you could sharpen it. They're 420 J2 stainless steel. So not a, uh, not a crazy high edge retention on them, uh, but definitely affordable and easy to, to resharpen if you need it. Or you can just thrash it and not feel too guilty about uh, tossing it when, the, when it's kind of lived its life. Blade changes are nice and easy. Like I said, you just push down on that triad lock. Kind of pulls out. Take the next one in. And there you go. And it feels really strong. There's maybe a little bit of side to side wiggle going on. But, oh man, very, very little. 
Strength is definitely one of the strong points of the triad lock, and I think it really works here. It definitely feels like it's gonna work. The handle's nice too. Got a nice uh, amount of girth to it. Definitely get a full grip on this, even if you're wearing work gloves. Really cool device, uh, something a little bit different than the replaceable utility blades out there that you may be used to, but I think even stronger, not gonna have to worry about snapping the blade so much. Really cool, and again, just under 25 bucks. All right, next up we're gonna go with something a little fancier. This is a new slip joint from Viper. This is called the Key. And although the design of this knife isn't instantly identifiable as a particular designer, this is in fact a Jesper Vaknez design. One of the more restrained designs, I think, from him, uh, at least in recent times, but I really like the way it's turned out. Now this is just one of the many variations we've got right now. In fact, we've got 17 different new variants of this knife. That is a lot to choose from. You can get materials like titanium, carbon fiber, micarta, uh, milled titanium, uh, Dama steel or M390 blades. And the prices range a lot, you know, very wide as a result. They go from about 130 on the low end up to 385 on the very high end. This particular one is mine, however. This one has a lightning strike carbon fiber handle scale with integral titanium bolsters. And of course the M390 blade. Nice drop point profile, uh, about three and a quarter inches long, flat ground. And being an Italian knife, it's something they seem to do a lot. They give us a nice crown spine on the top of that slip joint right there. And it extends into the back spring, which is also crowned, but also milled. Really fancy. We got a little bit of sort of jimping here at the front, as well as some rope file work there at the very back. Really cool, nice little added degree of appreciation when you pull this knife out and use it. Speaking of pulling the knife out, I'll close it here first. We got a nice half stop. Really good, really uh, excellent walk and talk. It also comes with a leather pocket slip. So you can throw that in your pocket without kind of dinging up the, uh, the handles of the knife, especially on a fancier one like that, like this one, it's gonna protect it a little bit better. But it's a very cool design, very good gentleman's EDC slip joint. Great action, I mean, it just feels really good, very premium. And it's something that you're going to be very proud to carry, I think. I certainly am going to be as I carry this one. All right, next we've got a new Hinderer. And this is the latest version or the latest iteration of his vintage series of XM18 flippers, now with the Skinner Profile Blade. If you're familiar with his vintage, vintage series already, you know exactly what you're going to get here. First things first is an 01 tool steel blade, very old school. We've got a flat grind going on here and, of course, that really cool skinning blade profile. It's got a black parkerized finish to help keep rust at bay because O1, of course, is not a stainless steel. And it's got a little bit of a uh, kind of a stonewashed texture on it, which looks really cool. The handle is walnut, flat walnut in this case. There's no checkering on this one. And on the back, we've got the de rigueur hinderer titanium frame lock, but with a cool kind of green stonewashed, greenish brassy stonewashed finish that looks really cool as well as some copper accented hardware to tie everything together, both the back spacers or the barrel spacers, I should say, the thumb stud, the pivots. It's a really cool feel, especially I think on this, this Skinner profile, even more so than some of the other blade shapes. Uh, just, it fits the vibe of it even better. Price on this, of course, we, this is a premium American made folder flipper, uh, 465. Uh, speaking of flipper, I didn't mention it. This does come with the new triway pivot system. So you've got your choice of, uh, of bearings and bushings and different things in the, in the package, but the bearings are installed out of the box, making these really great, very good flippers indeed. Next, we've got a new variant of the Hinderer Ranch fixed blade now with the drop point profile. Now the other profiles, the other blade shapes may look a little bit cooler, but I, I just love a drop point just for the utility, especially on a big fixed blade like this. It's just in my wheelhouse and I love the shape of this. I love the overall shape of this whole design really. Price on these are 350. The steel is the CPM 3V. This is not like an 01 steel, which is good stuff, but 3V is definitely in another league of performance. Handle scales are micarta. I've got natural here, but we've also got green as well as a red canvas micarta. It's not like a super bright red. It's not like a G10. It's a little bit on the, uh, the softer side, but you don't really see red too much when it comes to micarta. So it's a really cool, uh, really cool option. Blade itself is a little bit over five inches long, about five and a quarter, I think. Uh, and thickness about three sixteenths of an inch. Nice flat grind, really stout profile, but it's still gonna cut very nicely. And that 3B, of course, is gonna be nice and tough too. The handles have a little bit of a swell, a little bit further towards the back, 
that kind of facilitates a little bit choking back if you need a little bit of extra reach. It's not really a chopper per se, but for me it feels best when you're choked back a little bit and uh, doing your, your heavier jobs that way. But then when you need to choke up, you can use that choil, get right up there. The jimping there is not super sharp. It's, uh, it's definitely gonna grab your thumb, but it's not gonna tear your thumb up while you use it and you, while doing those smaller jobs. As for the sheath, it definitely feels very high quality. And there's a little bit of a red uh, hint to this sheath. It's almost like a dark burgundy or dark oxblood uh, stain on this sheath. Dye, not stain, but you know what I mean. Uh, it's formed really nicely. It doesn't quite click in like Kydex, but when you take it out, it almost has a click like Kydex, which is pretty cool. Uh, definitely really high quality. And it's definitely uh, something that looks really good on the belt, even without the knife taken out. That's something that is gonna look nice there. Kind of a proud, maybe even your, uh, your barbecue knife, so to speak. Those of you who know about barbecue guns, you know what I'm talking about. But it's really cool. Price is not bad either. For a, for a uh, US made knife like this, with materials like this, for it to be only about 350, 350 exactly right now, solid, solid performing knife. All right, let's get to a big knife from another company. Now, if I held this up and has, asked you what company you think made this knife, I bet you you wouldn't guess Buck Knives, but that's who made this knife. It reminds me an awful lot of a Tops in a way, but this is the new Talon fixed blade from Buck Knives, available in two different colors. We got the Coyote Tan uh, Cerakoted version as well as a black version, both of them coming in about 175. This is definitely a knife that's intent on busting things up. That blade is thick, nearly a quarter inch in fact, and it's 5160 spring steel, so it's very, very tough indeed. You're gonna be able to hack, slash, even pry with this knife and be able to kind of get away with some of that abuse because of the strength of that steel. Now with a recurve shape like this, it's definitely uh, gonna work well when you need to kind of hook into some of your material. Uh, if you wanted to use this for like camping or yard work, I could see this being useful in like branches uh, or anything like that that's kind of gonna maybe have a little bit of give to it as you're slicing or as you're chopping and kind of pulling towards yourself that downward turn to this blade is gonna help a little bit to keep the knife from, or the edge from kind of slipping out so much. It's gonna work well, of course, on rope and stuff like that as well. It's plain edge for most of the length, but we do have a, uh, a section back here, uh, a bit over two inches of serrations. Uh, they're not super aggressive though, and I actually like that because eventually even serrations will dull. Of course, they tend to last a lot longer than a plain edge, but, and then even when they do start to get dull, they still cut fairly well but eventually they are gonna get dull too. And this, uh, it, this style right here, because it isn't these really sharp spikes, is gonna be a little bit easier to sharpen uh, at home if you need to or in the field. As far as extra utility that the blade brings, of course we have this saw back. Pretty wide teeth, it's gonna be more useful for like notching than actually cutting through stuff. The tip of the blade, or the front end I should say, has a pretty aggressive swedge. Now this edge is not sharp, but it is pretty darn fine. Uh, if you're out there and you needed to sharpen it yourself, you probably could, but you also might be able to use this for scraping as well because it comes to such a, a fine point, almost like a chiseling type of motion. Moving back to the handles, we've got a tricolor micarta uh, bolt-on grips on this particular one, as well as some, some holes up here near the front and a large lanyard, at the, or lanyard hole at the back so you can do some lashing of this knife if you wanted to. Uh, or even rig up some kind of lanyard. I'm a big fan of a forward lanyard, especially on bigger choppers like this, where you could tie that off here on this front hole, and then the loop comes down and, and uh, over and down your wrist, I should say. I really like the style of lanyard because if you let go or you lose your grip on the knife, it kind of stays right there, which is really nice. And definitely appreciate it, as I said, on a really big chopper like this. Now the sheath is really impressive too. Uh, in fact, it kind of reminds me a lot of like the SE Hoongless sheath. This isn't Kydex though, this is a nylon sheath. It clicks in like Kydex, however. Plenty of different lashing points uh, all the way around, as well as some Velcro straps here that attach to a Molly compatible backer. That way you can lash this to your other Molly gear if you want, or you can use the loop here at the end to run it through your belt, string a baldric through it, whatever you want to do because this is a pretty heavier knife to carry. You're gonna want something to kind of support that weight. I wouldn't want to carry this personally on my belt, but hey, you might. All right, next up, we've got a couple new condors. And the first is the new Bush Glider fixed blade. Now you may of course remember the Pterosaur, which had a handle that was identical to this. Uh, well, this is the first in what we're expecting to see a number of new variants, a number of new blade shapes paired to that handle. 
The Pterosaur, of course, was a Scandi ground drop point blade, while the Bush Glider is a clip point blade with a flat grind, almost a full flat grind, in fact, as well as a nice fine swedge there near the tip. So if this is, uh, if you're doing any kind of hunting, this is definitely gonna be a better choice than the Pterosaur, especially in this orange color right here. Uh, and this, that orange is just one of the colors that we've got right now. We've got the other standard colors that you've come to expect on the Pterosaur, that being uh, green, brown, and black. But we've also got orange uh, Pterosaurs in stock now as well. I know people have been waiting for those. In addition to hunting uses, anything where you need to, do, need to do finer slicing, this is gonna be a better option than the Pterosaur. That could be food prep, um, you know, of course, definitely hunting I mentioned, utility work, like if you wanna use this as a, like a cardboard cutter or something like that, it's gonna slice a little bit better. As far as the rest of the construction of the blade, we got 1095 carbon steel, which is really nice. I'm really happy to see Condor uh, rolling that out as an option. And the thickness is a little bit in between uh, 3 30 seconds and an eighth of an inch, uh, probably because they spec this out in metric when they're building it. But definitely enough strength. 1075, of course, they use that a lot. That's going to be even tougher than 1095, but the 1095 is going to get you some better edge retention. As far as the sheath, this is the same sheath as the, uh, as the Pterosaur as well. Uh, I think Joe Flowers, who designed this knife, designed all these different blade variants to fit with the same injection molding for the handle and for the blade or, or the, uh, the sheath itself, which is why they can do uh, a bunch of different blade shapes a little bit more economically. And I mentioned that kind of economical factor because these are very affordably priced knives. Come in at the same price as the Pterosaur. These are just $42.50, really good deal. Now this next Condor is a little bit fancier and a little bit more expensive as a result. This is the new Bisonite fixed blade coming in at just over 72 bucks. This is a Walter Matthews design and I think a really solid and very well thought out bushcraft shape. We're slightly larger. We've got about a 4.7 inch blade, still easily controllable, but it's got a little bit more length than some of the, uh, the quote unquote four inch bushcraft knives out there. 1095 carbon steel, similar thickness to that Pterosaur and, uh, and bush glider that we just saw. But being a bushcraft knife, this is a Scandi ground profile. The handles more typical of Condor are their uh, South American hardwood, very similar to walnut. And they've spiced things up here with some red and white liners on each side, makes it look a little bit nicer, a little bit more premium, but it still feels very good as well. That's not the girthiest handle out there. Condor's uh, bush lore knife, for example, has a little bit more height this way, but it, it melts in there very nicely. They've contoured it very well. We've got a nice little flare here out towards a domed cap at the end, provides you a little bit of retention there on a pull cut. And we've also got some thumb scallops here at the front. I think they're, they're definitely cribbing a lot of ideas from some of the, uh, the North American bushcraft makers out there. Now that same idea carries through to the sheath as well. Us bushcrafters out there are certainly very familiar with this type of design. We've got leather sheath again, fire steel loop here at the, at the side with a flat bottom. And turning it over to the back, we've got a dangler attachment as well as a wider loop here. Now the dangler is not uh, very easily removable. You'd have to either cut this or cut through the ring, or you can flip it down uh, underneath and still run your belt through here without uh, losing the, uh, the ability to use that dangler later if you wanna get it lower on your, uh, on your leg as you're carrying it. But it definitely feels uh, built very well. Nothing wrong with that at all. All right, one more new Condor this week that I'm gonna show you, but we actually have a bunch of new Condor that just hit the shelves, and I really, I couldn't fill up the whole table with just Condor, so I picked some of the ones that were, were my favorites, but I'll try and uh, pepper in some of the, the other ones in the next couple of weeks. But now we've got the Lost Roman from Condor. This is technically a Joe Flowers design, but technically not also. It's not quite uh, original to him. This is actually modeled after a Roman era knife that was unearthed in London not too long ago. It was a little bit smaller. Joe scaled it up a little bit uh, as he, when he translated it to this Condor version. Uh, five inch blade again, about 72 bucks, very similar uh, in price to the, uh, the Bisonite. Uh, but we've got as a, uh, a little bit more embellishment, instead of liners, we've got some engraving here on the hardwood handles. Of course, we've got a protruding tang with a really wide lanyard, lanyard hole there. You could even fit a carabiner through there if you wanted to. But the blade profile, I actually really like. It's very traditional, very simple, but it's gonna be a very effective slicing design. You know, that's 
Back then, knives had to work first. They weren't made to really look pretty, uh, at least on the, uh, the more kind of worker bee and, and peasant level of knives. And this one definitely feels like it's gonna slice, cut very efficiently. Nice full flat grind there, 1075 steel. And it's just, it's kind of a link to the past, which you see that a lot with some Condor stuff. They really take uh, a hard look at traditional patterns and try to bring them into the modern age without changing as much as they could and trying to change actually as little as they have to. Sheath is also very nice. It's leather, kind of a, uh, a pancake stitch here and a small loop there at the back. Really cool design and just really cool. <laughs> what else can I say? Nice link to the past there with the Lost Roman. All right, next we've got a new larger fixed blade. In fact, we've got a lot of fixed blades here on the table right now, which means I'm in my happy place. So there you go. There's a new design from Matt Graham and Tops Knives. This is the Earth Skills fixed blade. Now, at first glance, I actually thought this was a Condor because I've seen a handle very similar to this before, and that's actually from one of the Matt Graham collaborations with Condor. So immediately I thought, that looks familiar, and it's because it's the same designer, so there you go. But I like the shape of this overall uh, with this very prominent drop here at the back. You've still got plenty of length, so it's not really restrictive. It doesn't get in the way, but it does let you choke back and still have a really solid grip on the tail end of the knife so you can get more leverage when you're chopping. As far as chopping goes, this is a longer blade. Not crazy long, it's still very manageable. Uh, still balances really nicely if you need to do some smaller work but we've got about eight and a quarter inches of 1095 carbon steel, about an eighth of an inch thick. So it's strong enough, but it's not really a heavy chopper. That's not its intended purpose. What it is good at, you can do some light machete work without having to carry a full size machete with you. That's where that extra uh, choke back length on the handle comes in handy, gives you that little bit more reach. And like I said, it does balance very nicely. That's gonna allow you to do those smaller tasks really well. And also thanks to that very continuous curve to the edge, it's gonna allow you to pull off long slicing cuts very easily as well. Because that edge is kind of gonna follow you around as you move down to, you know, down a stick, whether you're doing long curls, whether you're doing long cuts, doing some kind of like butchering or you know, any kind of wild edible stuff like that. Uh, the grind, it looks at first like uh, I expected this to be Topps' Scandi Vex grind, which is kind of the, uh, in between a Scandi and a Convex, but it's actually a really stout flat grind there with a secondary bevel. Uh, as far as bushcraft uses, we're not quite crisp enough here on the back to strike a fire steel, but that is going to make it a little more comfortable choking up. There's definitely a lot of capability in this design. It's balanced well, it's going to carry nicely, it's going to let, let you get uh, it's going to cover a wide range of uses, I should say. And the price on this, made in America, about $158 right now. Oh, almost forgot about the sheath. This is a leather sheath, as you can see. Holds it in there. Comes with Topps' survival whistle attached. But you'll notice there's only one kind of belt loop slot here. And that's because the sheath is actually designed to ride cross draw behind your back at an angle. So you thread your, your belt through there and you can angle it and you can kind of shift it around as you're moving around, maybe even get to it from both sides. But it is designed intentionally that way. This wasn't like a mistake where they only put one belt loop on there. All right, let's finish things off this week with some fancy flippers. We've got the new knife, or a new knife, I should say. Several new knives, actually, I should say, from Riot. This is the new Iron. And this is available in two different form factors. You've got a thumb stud version as well as a flipper version. I'll talk about the flipper version first. We've got uh, M390 blade steel, about three and a quarter inches long, but it's a really broad drop point shape, almost a spear point in fact, maybe not quite, but um, definitely feels like this is a blade that could stand up to some heavier uses, even though it's a little bit shorter. Same thing with the handle. There's enough grip there. I wear a size large work glove and I've got just enough for a four finger grip, but it fills the hand pretty nicely because of the thickness and the contouring that they've put on there. So you're not gonna take up a crazy amount of space in your pocket, but you can still feel like you're gonna be able to get some big work done. Or this can just be a nice little, a nice piece of pocket jewelry. A few different variants to choose from, uh, carbon fiber or green or natural micarta inlays, uh, as well as a few different uh, treatments of the pivot hardware. These, this one right here is plain, but there's a couple of different anodized options if you want something a little, uh, a little more pop of color. Flipping action, it's a Riot. So it's gonna be very nice. Nice set of bearings in the pivot. M390 blade steel, like I said, 
a little bit of a finger choil there where you can choke up if you need to. Milled titanium pocket clip on the right side, hidden lanyard point. It's a titanium frame lock flipper and this does that genre very, very well. But if you don't want a flipper, you can go for this thumb stud version. This one is the natural micarta. And rather than just like a simple kind of barrel thumb stud, we've actually got a machined thumb stud going on here. That way they can actually build this in a way where it actually catches your, your thumb very nicely. It can actually be designed around the ergonomics of your thumb and lets you flick it out very, very nicely. They've also angled the back side of it here. So you, you can do like a pinch grip here right in front of the scale. And it's very conducive the way they've got that, uh, that thumb stud shaped to be able to do that sort of thing. In fact, I think this one also is a little bit better than the flipper in terms of the, uh, the handle accommodations, because instead of just a finger choil, we've got a wide flat ricasso here with no finger guard sticking out. So it's a little gentler there. There's a little more space, especially if you're like me, if you have bigger fingers, it feels a little bit more comfortable than if you were riding up there right towards the back of the edge. So that's the iron from Riot Knives. Titanium frame lock flippers are usually everywhere these days, but we've only actually only got two different designs on the table this week, which is kind of interesting. But they do this one does that genre very well, priced right now at 375. All right, finally, we're gonna end with the most expensive piece on the table right now, the new ADV Andre de Villiers Alien Flipper. This is the production version coming in at 620. There's a few different handle variants or handle colors available. I kind of pulled the blingiest one right now. This is the gold frame, titanium frame, of course, milled into kind of a spinal column, alien-esque shape, very H.R. Giger inspired. Uh, definitely, I think he was thinking of uh, the movie Alien when he was designing this particular knife. This is the other titanium frame lock flipper on the table right now, and it's very lightweight. Thanks to all these, uh, these machined out pockets, these holes, this only comes in at about 2.6 ounces. It's not like a, a Benchmade bug out, but it's not far off. The pocket clip is milled as well, right side tip up only. Got a nice little ball bearing there at the end for the retention point. And of course it flips really nicely. We've got something that reminds me a little bit of like the Daryl Ralph uh, flipper hoop, but it's definitely gonna grab uh, your thumb very nicely. It's gonna be easy to find and easy to flip open very well. That titanium actually continues out towards the blade because we've got this spine treatment here that actually acts as a little bit of an armature that you screw the blade into. This is an M390 blade and it is technically replaceable. As far as the actual utility of this knife goes, this is a style piece first and foremost. That actual arm right there is actually going to impact the cutting ability of this whole back half of the blade itself. But if you needed to do a lot of tip work, you've got this really acute Warncliffe profile going on. And of course, M390 is gonna hold an edge an awful long time. Or you could buy this, put it on display, and it's going to look awesome. All right, guys, that's all the new knives I've got to show you this week. Been working from home a lot lately, so I'm really happy to be able to get in and see these new knives, and it's a privilege to be able to share them with you all out there. Hopefully it kind of helps you kind of get through your, your quarantines right now. As of right now though, Knife Center is still open for business. We are still shipping orders out. And if you wanna get your hands on any of these knives, we're gonna leave links in the description that'll take you over to the website. And be sure to sign up for our Knife Rewards program while you're over there, because if you're gonna be buying a new knife right now, you might as well earn some free money to spend on your next one. In the meantime, let us know in the comments what here you liked, what was the favorite thing you saw this week, and I'll keep bringing these to you guys as long as I possibly can. I'm David C. Anderson from the Knife Center signing off. Stay safe, sane, and sanitary out there. See you next time.